And I'd like to accept this on behalf of the amazing women in Amasai Village because they are so filled with boldness and courage. Um, it was just about a year after my daughter and I left uh, Tanzania, uh, only to return shortly after that to see the first three classrooms of our school completed, that we had spent about two weeks in the village, um, actually for the first time getting to know what it was like to be in this very harsh environment and, and know exactly what the women were going through and the children not to be able to get clean water and, and what their lifestyle was like. The women would stand in front of their dung huts, you know, tied with all these beautiful colored pangas and draped with lots of beaded collar necklaces and beautiful earrings. And they invited us into their little huts to see, um, you know, what, what they lived in. And it was so dark because truly a dung hut has no windows. It's just made of dung and has a straw roof. And, and it wasn't until we took our cameras out and actually took, um, used the flash that we got to see that there was nothing in these huts. There wasn't one, one piece of furniture. There wasn't anything for them to sleep on. Everything they owned was on their back, except for a few dirty containers in the corner that contained some water and a little bit of oil for cooking. Um, before I left the village, uh, it was about the last day that we were there on a particular trip, uh, somebody handed me a letter from the women and said, do not read this until you get back to the convent. I couldn't wait to get back to find out what was in the hearts of these women that they took the time to have someone actually write a letter for them to me. And the letter says, Dear Mama Kelly, we are so sorry to come to you, but you are a mother and so I know you understand our hearts. We are not who we appear to be. We are slaves to our husbands. We are servants. We have to beg for everything, even for a little bit of oil to light our homes that night. Please do not tell our men because we will be thrown out naked in the streets. Please, can you teach us something? I knew then that our job was not just about the children anymore, that we had to do something for these women. I didn't sleep for the longest time, but the next, the next morning when we were leaving, I, to say goodbye to the children at the school and to the people in the village, I quickly asked the women to come into a room and we had one of the nuns from the convent with us and so I asked her to interpret to quickly and quietly tell them that I was taking their letter home in my heart and I would not forget them. During the next year, Everybody who needed to show, up in my, to show up in my life showed up. We had incredible people come and offer containers that we could fill to bring back with us on our next trip everything we would need for classrooms and all the buildings that we had hoped to build. We had an architect come and say, let me help design the school. Tell me what kind of rooms do you need? I said, now it's no longer just about the children. I said, yes, we want a library for them because if they're going to learn how to read, we need to have books for them. But now we have to think about the women. The women need a room of their own. They need some place where we can teach them things. And we also need a little clinic. And so before long, we had a great plan. And we had a fundraiser. And we had so many good-hearted people dropping things off in my garage for almost one whole year. We could hardly, we certainly didn't put the cars in. But um, the containers actually were delivered to my driveway. And um, it, was a, it was a wonderful day when they were packed up, filled with thousands of books, donations from everybody, bookcases that were made by my neighbor that we were taking over for the library. So the following April, we arrived in Tanzania to greet the containers in the nearby village so that we could personally escort them into our Maasai village and present them to our, to our people on behalf of the good hearts of the American people. When we opened those doors and the sign said, with love and good best wishes from your friends in America, all of the Maasai began to dance. In that container was everything we needed to, to change, change this little village around, at least to put it in a, on a new direction. We had one of our volunteers with us immediately start setting up the Women's Vocational Center, which at that point was so important to us. We wanted to get these women started on, on a new future. And we had six sewing machines that we had, and a lot of 
miscellaneous fabrics, and but we brought fabrics particularly just to sell, to, to make curtains for our library. And um, since we didn't have enough fabric for them to practice on, our gal who was in charge of them had them write their name on a piece of paper, and then they spent the rest of the day sewing their name, going around the letters of their name, and that's how they learned how to use the sewing machines, by sewing their name on a piece of paper. They did this for three days because by that time they knew what their name was, they knew what their name looked like, and they knew how to use the pedals on the sewing machine. By the fourth day, they were cutting fabric, and by the next morning, they were hanging drapes in the library. The library was having a spill with shelves. Books were organized, and at 2 o'clock, we had our first school board meeting. And I will tell you, sitting there with six people from America, 18 Maasai dressed in their kamas, looking out the windows, seeing the boats, over our heads was the American flag and the Tanzanian flag. It was an amazing moment in my life. So we began with a prayer, and we all took turns talking about things that were important. But then all of a sudden, on the far right-hand corner of the table, stood up one of the, we had six board members who were women from the Maasai. One of the women stood up with such confidence, put her hands on the table, looked straight ahead, put her shoulders back, and said, we would just like to thank all of our friends in America who made this possible that we women now have a place of our own. She said, it is as if God had walked into our village and changed our lives. Thank, please thank everybody when you go back to America for what you've done for us. Well, this was the first time I had ever, in all my times there, ever seen a woman stand up and, and express her opinion in front, of a, in front of one of the men in the village. She no sooner sat down when the woman next to her stood up. And I was just so proud of them. I was so proud of them that they had, that they had kept that to this point. And she also expressed her gratitude for what had happened. And she said that they never ever imagined in all their lives that they would have such a gift that they now had a room of their own where they could be taught. That, that afternoon, we left the library. It was almost 6 o'clock by the time we got out of there because we had to go from English to Maasai to Swahili and we had to translate back and forth. So it took a long time by the time everyone had a chance to speak. But we were leaving the library, and all of a sudden, we saw everybody running out, out, out the door, and they sort of ran a ways, and then they turned around and looked back. And I, I went to join them, and, and there, over our school, was the most incredible rainbow. And it was just, it hadn't been raining. It was 6 o'clock in the evening, and there was this incredible rainbow surrounding our school. It was a moment that there were just weren't any, any words to express this was the awesomeness of it all. But I knew it was God saying, I am pleased with this day. So as one of, a, one of the women in our village, a woman, Elizabeth, who was a cook for our children, and we found out that she, when she could sew, we sort of elevated her to be in charge of our, our little vocational center and gave her a nice raise in pay. And we interviewed her um, during the course of our stay. And she went on to say um, that, that she, the women in, in the large cities in Tanzania better look out because the women of this rural village were marching. They were marching forward because they now have hope. <laughs>